podcast has started uh game crew podcast number six this is a re-recording because i we recorded one like a month ago and then my bitch ass waited two weeks to try to upload it and i had a bunch of life complicated anyways game crew podcast number six it's just me and Pud because reeves decided he was gonna leave us and go do his own podcast <laughs> Reeves. Don't throw, don't throw shade. Throw in the shade. Leave it us to go do a baseball podcast. That's not really what happened. It kind of is. He told us he didn't have time to do our podcast. He was too busy. And then fast forward like a few weeks or whatever. And then he's on Twitter like, hey, I'm going to start a podcast. Disrespectful. Anyway, we got some topics laid out here. I have some topics laid out here. Um, Some of them might not all stick because the gaming section of life is just kind of boring right now but um we'll we'll make the best of it did you hear about discord potentially being purchased by microsoft no feelings on that um you know what i trust microsoft more than i do facebook so i'm okay with it i do trust microsoft more than i trust facebook but Almost um, everything Microsoft touches turns to shit. <laughs> to um, be honest, I would I would be more okay with it if Amazon or um Google just outright bought Discord. Then I'd be yeah. more okay with it. Same. Maybe not. Maybe not Google because they have a lot of. I rules. trust Google enough. I don't know. I don't. I think they're. I don't know. Uh, did you I hear how they're... much they were going to purchase it for? If I haven't heard about it, I haven't heard them out. What's do you guess? Guess a number. Don't be ridiculous either. Guess guess an actual logical number. Two point six million. Ten big ones. What do we have? Big ones? You mean ten grand? No, 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 no. <laughs> ten billion with a B. Oh. Yeah. The same amount that they bought fall or you know Bethesda with for billion. That's amazing. They bought an entire gaming like col- col- fucking conglomerate, and then they're gonna buy Discord. Just yeah, Discord. I, I could Just kind Discord. of understand Bethesda for ten billion because of the potential, but I well, don't. It wasn't, it wasn't see. just Bethesda. What all was it? It was. No, no, it was Bethesda. It, Bethesda, it, it was Zenimax, which is the owner of Bethesda, but Zenimax, Beth- I don't know how to explain this. Zenimax has a bunch of mobile games and stuff too, but it was pretty much, the the big one was Bethesda. And Bethesda pumps out so many, you know, different games, Starfield, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, of course. Um, and then they have some other stuff here and there, but like, they weren't buying Zenimax for the mobile games. I don't promise. they? Don't they make? Don't they make Bioshock? No, I don't think so. No. Who makes Bioshock? I thought it was Bethesda. Uh, well, let's see. If anybody would like to be our, our Joe Rogan's version of Jamie for the podcast, comment below. I'm already. I'm already googling it. Uh, Bioshock. Uh. Two K. Uh, uh, yep. 2K games, um, irrational games, not good branding. Uh, yeah, that's that's who makes Bioshock. But Bioshock's been out of the out of it for a while. Um, yeah, I don't know. I I, I kind of don't want them to buy it, but if they do, I'm not gonna be super upset about it because at the same time, pretty much everything that they touch does turn to shit, aka Mixer and a couple other things. They did buy Minecraft, and Minecraft did continued to be successful but they also kind of didn't touch minecraft after they bought it well, they bought it and then they're like all right do what you've been doing and the only difference is they you know they made things like minecraft dungeons and stuff which is honestly in my opinion probably a, a good thing for minecraft as a whole but yeah i don't know i don't i don't really care that much but i just hope that if they do buy it they don't fuck it up oh bethesda also makes the dishonored series dishonored yeah you're right there's another one that they make too point is is they do make quite a few different games and now microsoft owns them and i don't think that it's gonna make a huge difference on overall 
Whew, Xbox sales. Um, that did make me want to talk about something else. And now I, I am super forgetful tonight. I don't remember what it was that I wanted to talk about. What did I have pulled up? Oh my gosh, Pud, remind me we were talking about Fallout, games, uh, Bethesda, Bioshock, shit. Oh, I know. What? I officially have a good gaming setup. I now have a dual monitor setup. <laughs> That wasn't what I was going to talk about, but yeah, we can definitely talk about that. Awesome. I will actually talk about that. Anyone that says that they can't afford to have a PC set up, you can. You're just not going to have, like, you know, I can stream Call of Duty at fucking 144 hertz and fucking 100 and whatever how many FPS. I got a fucking PC off Amazon for 500 a monitor off Amazon for, like, a buck fifty, and then another monitor off Amazon for... About two seventy, so that's like what a grand all together. Yeah, pretty Your, fucking Yours is close. a really good deal. Um, like mine. Now I I didn't buy all my shit at once. You know, my shit was an accumulation over like the last six years. But the monitor I have in front of me, I spent about a thousand on at the time. It's worth like two hundred now. The monitors to my left and right are worth like ninety dollars. The monitor mount was like a hundred. The PC itself is about two grand. The PS5, 500. And then the microphones, recording equipment, headsets, put that all together. That's probably another five to six hundred. Um, so my my total setup, it runs about four grand, probably four to forty five hundred. And my I didn't setup even, is small. Like it's not. I didn't even. I didn't even factor in like. I bought my mouse keyboard and mouse pad off amazon from the razor store for like 200 and i'm happy with them i want to get a new mouse just because this isn't an rgb one which i know is a very stupid thing to want a new mouse over but i want a new mouse ps4 i bought brand new it was like 500 but it's not worth near that much now and the the monitor mount that i got was like you have a ps4 pro right no, I just have a regular PS4 one terabyte. Um, well, the PS4 Pros, do you know how much they're going for right now? Probably like 350 or 400 so. They're up 40%. Why? They're they're like 5 560 or something. Why? They're hard as fuck to find, man. There's not a lot of them out there cuz they're not making a bunch of them because they're obviously focused on PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 5s are practically impossible to get. So people who don't, who people who can't afford a PS5, or people who can afford a PS5 but can't find one, are just like, all right, I'll settle for for this because I have the money in my hand and I want it. Um, which is stupid. If you're do, if you're thinking about doing that, don't do it. I know it's tempting, but don't do it. That's yeah, like PS- saying, okay, I want a Lamborghini and I have the money for it, but I can't find one, so I bought a Corolla for the same price as a Lamborghini, bro. <laughs> That's like. Yeah. No, don't do that. Yeah. Although I will say this about the PS5. You guys a stick drift? Fuck you. It's really fucking annoying. And your guys' controllers are expensive as hell now. They're $80. And I'm going to have to go fucking buy a new one. And if it goes out in fucking... Because th- let's be honest. I didn't really play my PS5 a fuck ton until I moved in here. So what is that? Three months of consistent use. And the... I mean, it's it's... Every day that I play, it's getting worse. Like my aim will just shoot straight up to the sky or like I have to actively play as if I'm fighting the drift the whole time. Yeah. Really annoying. So ugh, count. You have to counter steer a fucking controller. Not That's always, amazing. not always. It'll happen for like 10 seconds at a time where I have to like fucking fight it and then it'll stop and then it'll do it again in like five minutes. It's really annoying. Um, and not only that, I don't know what's wrong with this controller. The only thing that I've heard is that there's stick drift. But the stick drift that I saw videos of is nothing like mine, where it shoots up to the sky. It's always just, like, very slight, subtle movements that you don't mean to do that it's doing itself. Which is what I would expect stick drift to be, because that's what it's always been in my experience. But my controller does the shit where it shoots straight up to the sky. And then my um, triggers and my tacticals will just randomly activate when I'm not doing anything. Like, I literally had my controller on my desk, and my controller was throwing lethals. And I wasn't, nothing was touching the controller. Uh, really annoying. It's only done that once, though. 
you know if you bring that up to like a PlayStation customer support result them being like, this thing is obviously broken. Well, sir, you must have dropped it. No, Sony's really good about that stuff. They would replace the controller, 100%. I'm confident that they would replace the controller. They would send me a box to put it in, ship it to them, and they'd send me a new one within a couple of weeks. The problem is, is I don't want to go a couple of weeks without a fucking controller to use on my PS5. So I'm just going to suck it up and buy a new one. But you know what I am going to do? I'm going to buy a new one, and then I'm going to contact them, and I'm going to say, hey, this controller doesn't fucking work, and then they're going to send me the box, and I'm going to ship it back, and then I'll have two controllers that work properly. Big brain but you still, you still paid for two controllers. No, because I didn't. I'll just be having. I'll have the one. It'd be like me buying an extra controller just to have, basically. Uh, but I'd rather do that than have one controller that works and one controller that doesn't. You know what I'm saying? So I do know what you're saying. Yeah, in the past, you know, I never had any issues with PS4 controllers. Never, and I know you had a lot of problems, but I never had a problem with a PS4 controller. Um, the only I problems like, I had I like were to... third-party controllers. I'd like to talk about my problems with PS4 controllers, actually. Go for it, bro. I I don't know if I can find it. I literally wore the analog stick down to a nub. Yeah, and I crazy, don't dude. understand how. And I had one that had awful stick drift. I had one that the analog stick was worn down to a nub. And then another one... My girlfriend bought for me brand new for Valentine's Day. It was like cherry red. I plug it in to use it, and I immediately can't sprint in first-person shooters. Yeah, you pretty much had issues with that one right out the box. I remember when that happened. Because I was like, I haven't, I haven't dropped this. It's not been touched by kids. It's not done anything except sat on my entertainment stand and then be picked up by me. And it was immediate problems and finally i sucked it up and i went and i bought a pure white one because i've never had a white controller and i mean it works fine for now but oh, it'll be a matter of time to be honest but yeah so i, I don't want to be like shit talking the ps5 controller because let me tell you i love the ps5 controller and everything that it does all the things that it has to offer but you got to get there was a video that i watched that broke down what the the little so there's like inside of the the controller underneath the joystick, there's like these little boxes that are used for like kind of like the motor of what the joystick does, right? Somebody broke down how long that's supposed to last based off of that specific model, and like they they mash it to the the company that makes it and all their public information about that model and everything. It's only good for about I think it was like three thousand strokes of use, which is the equivalent of like. 30 hours of game time which is not enough at all yeah 3000 strokes is not enough to get the job done no no it's not it it takes me at least 50000 but it takes my, me my at point, least it takes me at least 3005 it was either 30 hours or 60 hours it, either way i've put way more than that in in just call of duty you know let's not talk about the other games that i've played just Call of Duty, this year, I have seven days in Cold War, almost seven days, probably over seven with the amount of zombies I've played lately, and then in Warzone, we've been playing a decent chunk of that, and then, you know, I played that entire Spider-Man game, like, there's been a lot of use out of that controller, and, um under no circumstances should I be having to buy a brand new controller within, like, four or five months of getting this console. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Ridicola. Uh anyways, transition to a different topic. Um I don't think you're supposed to announce the transition part. I think you're just supposed to Yeah, I'm not good at that. So this is the transition. I feel like I feel like you had the word transition written on the piece of paper and you accidentally just read it instead of coming up with something. No, I just I'm saying transition because I'm awful at making transitions. There there's nowhere to, to Speaking of things that are never made properly and are always a failure, let's talk about Battlefield 6. I've never played a Battlefield game in my life. My point exactly. No, okay, so listen, that's that's me throwing shade. I do enjoy the Battlefield games. Um, Battlefield, the last Battlefield game, 5, was, from what I understand, I did buy it, played such a small amount of it, didn't have any interest. 
Um, it was a, an abomination to the Battlefield franchise. So bad that it knocked them out of the rotation for like four years of making Battlefield games. Um, Battlefield 1 was fun. I did enjoy that game. And then I liked both Battlefield 3 and 4. And Hardline had a good story. So I'm excited for the new Battlefield. The rumors around that are that we're going to get a trailer and some information coming up here in May. And then obviously the game will probably come out in like October. But is that a game that you'd be interested in purchasing, Pud? I will say this. Even if you won't like the multiplayer, because I'm expecting that you won't, the campaigns are almost always amazing for Battlefield games. Um, I'd have to watch gameplay of it first. That's how I make a decision on all the games I play. I watch gameplay of it. Or I just know. Yeah. Like, um, I'm trying to think of a game that I bought with just knowing I would like it. Um that star wars game yeah yeah i bought star wars fallen order um almost as soon as it released honestly the battlefield campaigns are probably a really good comparison to that game they're high quality and they're not very long so you're gonna get like six hours max out of it kind of the length of a call of duty campaign but they're usually really well written and they're beautiful if you ever get the chance to play the battlefield one campaign i recommend it Um, um didn't didn't battlefield one come after battlefield battlefield three and four yeah it was battlefield three four hardline i think hardline might have come before four but i think it was four and then hardline and then it was battlefield one and then battlefield five battlefield one takes place in world war one battlefield five takes place in world war two i don't ask me it's th that xbox marketing basically um and then Battlefield it 6 went, is supposed to be modern day again. Z, 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 z. It went... Um, I just lost the list because I clicked on it. The first Battlefield was Battlefield 1942 in 2002. Oh. And then Battlefield Vietnam in 04. Battlefield 2 in 05. 2 Modern Combat. Okay, I can see the whole... Can I copy your homework but don't make it obvious? Modern Combat, fucking Hulky. <laughs> um, Battlefield 2142 in 06. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Bad Company in 08. That's where they really, that's where they popped off was Bad Company. Battlefield Heroes in 09. That looks atrocious. Game. I think that's a mobile game. It's either mobile or it's for like PSP or some shit. A free-to-play online game that has no single-player mode. It was the very first game in the series to be played in a third-person shooter view. Uh, Battlefield 1943 and 09 as well. Okay, so yeah, those were... 1943 was probably like the main one. Uh, Bad Company 2. I, I've never played the game, but I recognize that cover art so much. Yeah. Bad Company was really popular, and so was Battlefield 3. Like Those ones are like the... The prime time. Um, Battlefield Online in 2010, and then Battlefield Play for Free in 2011. And then Battlefield 3 in 11, Battlefield 4 in 13, Hardline in 15. I remember watching gameplay of Battlefield 1, because doesn't it take place during, yeah, world, one of the world wars? Yeah, World War 1. And then Battlefield 5 just came out in 18 i say just came out but that was a or 11 that was three years ago yeah yeah it's they i to kind of sum it all up i'm excited for the new battlefield game i'm probably gonna end up buying it um but i can't guarantee that i'm gonna love the multiplayer it's just it's a much more strategical tactical kind of play style but with the call of duty formula of like the 6v6 kind of gameplay and then they also have the the big maps but here's the thing everybody who has a shooter game now has big open world maps like 150 players for battle royale if if battlefield could master a good br i could see myself loving it but they tried doing br with battlefield 5 i think and it it was so bad it was so bad. I think I have a couple yeah, of videos on my channel of it, but it was bad. People also said that 
Blackout wasn't that good either. And then they came out with Warzone, which was... Yeah. Blackout was really good. But just Blackout didn't have the same type of access that Warzone does. Blackout wasn't free to play. Blackout wasn't cross-platform. Like, that's what, that's what makes... If, if Warzone was locked behind a paywall, it would not be as popular as it is. Not even close. 100% not. Yeah. The free-to-play element is what makes it as, as big as it is. And then the cross-platform really helps it, too. So, I'm saying that the Battlefield... I can't remember what it was called. It was, like, something fire. The, the the ring that closes in the storm was at, was like a storm of fire firestorm was that what it's called i don't know it was a it was a storm of fire that you couldn't be in at all you would die instantly um which is i kind of like that but it was just super slow battlefield games are very easy to hide and there was not a lot of gun on gun action it didn't work out but if they could master that then i think it'd be cool uh speaking of you know, first person shooters and kind of talking about Call of Duty here. Uh Call of Duty World War Two Vanguard. Yay or nay? I like the I like the name. Um, you're right. Think, it was it was Battlefield Firestorm. You're right. I don't think that that's gonna be the full name of the game. I think that's their like code name. Every year they have like a code name for what the title is that they refer to it as in like articles and shit and like, you know, inside the workplace. And then when it comes out it's a different name, but it would be a cool name if that was actually it. Even if it was just Call of Duty Vanguard and it took place in World War II, I'd be so down with that. That's what they should name the Call of Duty game to end all Call of Duty games. Call of Duty Vanguard. Just have all the games in one right there. Yeah. That yeah, would be a I badass name. I want you to help me with something, Pud. I I've brought this topic up multiple times. And even in my own brain, I don't have a perfect fleshed out idea of how it would happen. But... You know, I've said this to you a lot of times, a Call of Duty game that is just one game, but everything brought together. And I want your opinion, but I think that if they took the the Treyarch formula, like their engine, I guess, you know how you play Modern Warfare and it feels different than like Black Ops 2 or Cold War or you didn't play Black Ops 3 or 4, I don't think, but those games, Black Ops 1, it feels different than the Infinity Ward Call of Duties. I think that the Treyarch style feels better than Infinity Ward and Sledgehammer. It it's does. Just my personal opinion. But um, if they took that and then they use that as like the core of the game, this is how it plays, this is how it feels when you run around, when you throw stuff, all that. And then they added in, you know, maps from Modern Warfare 2, COD 4, Black Ops 2, Black Ops 1, all that stuff, like the staples, you know, fucking high rise and rust and terminal, uh, uh, obviously Nuketown, firing range, all the all the big ones from all the, the Call of Duty games, raid, standoff, all that. Um, and then I think that how I what do you think that they would need to do to make that interesting and make it work to where it's as profitable as releasing a new game every year? I wouldn't put a story mode in that. I would I would call it Call of Duty Online. Just there like GTA that. Online. Yeah, but I would rebrand it. They already have that, and it's uh, a Chinese exclusive. They literally do exactly what I'm talking about, but the only people who live in China can play it. It's disrespectful. Okay, so then bring it over here or call it something else. Um, um, I think if they, they just literally called it Call of Duty. Just Call of Duty. No, that's n that's not descriptive enough, because then... It has to have a good name. Make it. I mean, even if they, even if they did like Vanguard, you know what I'm saying? Like that would work. Yeah, if they if they added something to it, Vanguard, great. Um, it can't be Crucible because every time I talk about them, I feel like I'm talking about Destiny. Yeah. Um, I also have a question about Destiny as a topic later. Um, kind but of about Destiny, I wouldn't put a story mode in it. I would make it solely online. I would do what they did in World War II. Um, not kill a bunch of people, but in the game World War II. <laughs> where you have a loading lobby where you can walk around and interact and be around other people and show yep. shit off. That was a super cool thing that they could have kept. I would I think... keep the map voting. Keep fucking map yeah, voting. For sure. For sure. But I, I think I think one of the biggest problems is there is some sort of a contractual agreement or something between the studios like Infinity War and uh, Treyarch and Sledgehammer 
etc. Now, technically, Activision owns them, but there is some sort of a balance there because they're in competition with each other, which is why the games don't share some of the shit that they should. It's gotten better over the years. Like, five years ago, we wouldn't have seen the, um, the, the, what's it called? The, the gun locker thing from Modern Warfare? Gun... Gunsmith? Yeah, the Gunsmith. Gunsmith. We wouldn't have seen Gunsmith come to a Treyarch title. We wouldn't see Modern Warfare 2 calling cards in a Black Ops game. So it's gotten better, but there is some sort of a deal between the studios and Activision where, like, they have to have their money. Like, they're obviously getting paid. So if Treyarch is the ones who have, like, the core of the game, I don't think you can combine all the studios to work together all the time. There's going to have to be a some sort of, like, a, a subset of, like, seasons you know i like the way that they do things now with the seasons and the battle pass i don't see any reason to change that uh but there has to be another layer to it It, it's still i think it still has to be a yearly thing but without the full price of a game you know like if one year it's treyarch's round and they're managing all the stuff that's getting added to the game whether that's cosmetics um in the shop all that stuff that's cool whatever um but at the beginning of that year, which right now would be like when the new game comes out in no- November, October, whatever, I think that they should have like a, a slightly more expensive thing that you can purchase that comes with a campaign, like a campaign and a, and a, a, a bunch of stuff for multiplayer. You know what I'm saying? And then every year it cycles through developers because I don't want to lose Call of Duty campaigns and I don't want to buy a separate $60 title every year either. Uh, I wouldn't. Yeah. I think if they did a, like a $30 once a year purchase and you get a bunch of cool multiplayer add-on stuff for Warzone and for the base multiplayer, Call of Duty, Vanguard, whatever, and then you have like a 6 to 10 hour campaign depending on the developer, typically, I can't even really say typically Treyarch does longer campaigns because the, <laughs> the one this year was hella short and the one before that didn't even exist. So uh, if they just cycled through developers and had a system like that i think that it would work really fucking well and take the best streaks from every game how do you think that guns would work because you know you have the modern warfare 2 ump 45 and then you have the modern warfare 3 ump 45 and then you have like the black ops 1 mp5 and then the black ops cold war mp5 which is like the same fucking gun how do you implement that into it if you're mixing them all together do you just take the best one of the two or do you create like a the, you take the best one of the two and then you put like a like a, a weapon variant of the black ops one or black ops cold war version of it for example and then of course like the modern warfare mp5 is is a completely different mp5 so that could be its own thing i wouldn't even begin to know where to start like it'd be I'd almost say combine whenever you have a weapon in, in multiple games that's the same weapon, combine their stats or something and make just a base. Just have something kind of like mush them all together. Yeah, just obviously don't make well no, you could literally make every gay every gun god tier so that no guns are god tier. You could I mean they could literally just add every single gun in. Like they I mean in a way they do that now black ops cold war has two galils in the game they just call them something different and they look slightly different the the Farah 83 or whatever i don't even think that was a real gun that's literally a galil with a different style that they added different stats to so i mean they could just make them all i like options is my point like i don't give a fuck if the galil from black ops 1 and the Galil from Black Ops 2 are the same exact, or here, let me rephrase that. I don't care if the Commando from Black Ops 1 and the, I don't know, the Tar-21 from Modern Warfare 2 are almost identical in stats, but they look different. I don't give a fuck. I'm cool with that. I just like, even if it's if it's a false sense of options because they do the same thing, I just like that idea. But I'm a weirdo, I guess. The Far 83 is an actual gun. What's the gun? It's a AR used by the Argentine army. Really? It's or uh, wait, hold on. Um, but I don't, I don't really care 
if they add all the guns together like that, I, I think that it still works, to be honest. Okay, okay. The Argentine army ordered a replacement for the FMAP FAL or an FN FAL, but licensed in Argentina. And the prototype was made in 81 and then it started being used in 84. So yes, the FAR 83 is an actual gun. Okay. It's manufactured by the FMAP DM. I don't know what the fuck that means. Um. Yeah, but regardless, from 84 my, to 90. regardless, my point is, is that they don't have to, the, the one thing that some people get stuck on is the numbers prove that the Call of Duty community as a whole does not give a flying fuck about realism. That's not the, that's not the, the people that play Call of Duty, the majority. So have fun with it, dude. I, I, I don't care if my gun has dragon wings and flies out of my hand. I, I, I live for that shit. For some reason, that is more okay to me, which that could never happen ever, than when the fucking game went to space. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, I, let's am think more, about... I am more okay with my gun literally killing people on its own and flying around the map than I am with me just having a jetpack. But I, yeah, I don't ever want to see jetpack Eric caught again. But what I will say is if they did somehow make this collage of Call of Duties... I'm not against seeing futuristic guns. I don't care about that either. As long as they still perform an equivalent to the gun, the other guns, then I don't care. I do not give a fuck if it shoots laser beams. I do not care. I just don't ten want the years, whole game based around Ten that. years from now, you're going to get domed by some eight-year-old using a fucking musket, and you're going to be using a fucking laser Gatling gun, and you're and just going to rage quit. <laughs> no, I won't give a fuck, dude. They had a blunderbuss in Advanced Warfare. Never raged over that. They, I, I just want them I to have I have seen fun. you rage a lot. I haven't raged over shit like that. No, but I'm saying, that could, that would happen, and it'd be hilarious. I'm sorry, I would laugh at your misfortune if I watched you get bodied by some toddler with a musket. Now, here's the other problem. How would they do, this isn't a big deal to you, I know you don't give a fuck about this, but how would they do the camos? Because obviously, if they did this and they had all these guns, they'd probably have the first initial set of camos that you could unlock. But... A big appeal, myself included, to the Call of Duty franchise is the camo grind. How do you do that for every year for the new, you know, $30 season, whatever you want to call it? How do you change that? Do you come up with just a new rare camo and then you just have to make sure you're getting all, like, they put a new set of challenges out that you have to do for every gun in the game and you have to redo it every year? Because I don't... Part of me is like, yeah, I'm fucking down. I want to be able to collect all them camos because you know that's what my mindset's going to be. But at the same time, it's kind of like, imagine having to redo a difficult-ass challenge on the same fucking difficult weapon for six years in a row. They could release five new weapons for every weapon class every year and have both developers make a camo for it. And then whichever developer sells that camo more in the buyable camos that developer team gets a bonus to make them competitive toward each other. No, no, no. I don't then, want to be buyable. That's no, no, no. The buyable camos. That yeah. way, instead of just pumping out, here is a spray camo, they put out fucking dope looking camos. And then every new gun that gets released has a variant of it with different camos. Okay. I kind of like that. I also think that they need to be doing more limited time events. Advanced Warfare did a really good job with this. Um, I know that you despise that game, and, and a lot of people do. But Advanced Warfare had these these game events that would come up where, like, if you played during this time period and this time period and you got to, you know, this rank or you got through this many of whatever the fuck they were doing, you unlocked exclusive gear that your character could wear. Like, gold, like, embezzled helmets and, and fucking armor pieces and shit that you could only get during that time period, that, that window. I think that shit's cool as fuck. Like, if I, if, give me a reason to play league play. If I knew that if I got to a super high rank in league play, I got this amazing, like, character skin that was flashy as fuck and stood out to everybody and they knew exactly what the fuck you had to go through to get that, I'm all for it. That's why I like the camos. 100%. Start doing what other people do. Make a deal with Supreme. Make a deal oh, with God. Gucci. 
Yeah. You just said flashy. Listen, I, I, I want, get where you're going. I Those want the best I ranked player in time shit to just look like an absolute douchebag. No, I don't want that. I don't want them to be wrapped in Supreme. I just want them to have really cool design stuff that stands above anything that you have in the fucking shop. Yes, but I, I know that they won't you, do it. To you it. and I, Supreme doesn't look good. But I know people that I know of people that literally put Supreme wraps on cars in the crew uh, so because this is what they I, fucking like it. This is what I'd say about that. I'm so okay with them like going out and having a deal with Supreme or Gucci or Nike or whoever the fuck they want and selling skins that are themed around that brand. But I only want them to be sold. I don't want them to be the grindable skins. Because I don't want, like, because this is what's going to happen. Because I'm this person, I'm going to have to grind for a skin I don't even fucking want. You already do. Because, yeah, like, I don't fucking want, I didn't want Damascus. Damascus wasn't, like, super amazing looking. I think it looked good, but it wasn't anything crazy special. But I had to have it. Now, so you, you already do. And what I'm saying is, have these been, like, the timed exclusives? Like, have there be a Supreme Week? Yeah, that yeah, sounds a little. That sounds a little. How, <laughs> I, I, how there be a Gucci that. week or something like that? Yeah, to where like, and, you don't you don't have to grind for it, but if you want to, you can. In COD World War Two, they did this uh, event where they added zombies to the multiplayer. So like you're playing hardpoint, and then like zombies would start spawning around you. You had to kill zombies and other players. It was super fucking fun. So fun, but they i think the month that they did that if you got to like a certain amount of score or something as a community you got like this exclusive custom like skin customization where you you're like this dude who has like spikes on his shoulders and all sorts of like zombie shit on you and gore and blood and stuff there needs to be more stuff like that also bring back uh create an emblem you'll never do it because lots of people like to make titties but please Bring it back. Oh, no. Titties made out of circles and crescent shapes. Dude, people Poor made... people. People made very good-looking emblems on there with, like... I don't even know how to explain it. Um, It was more than just that. Like, I've seen... Because you have to understand, we're not talking about the Black Ops 1 create a class, which gave you, what, 10 options? Like, 10 tabs to use for, for like, layers? It was, layers? like, 20. It no, like it was 20. like ten. You know, it was like ten or fifteen layers in Black Ops One. I want to say it was fifteen. In I the would, new uh, Call of Duties, they had over a hundred layers, bro. Okay, it's still titties that were made by a thirteen-year-old. Grow some skin. I know. I agree. I, I don't think it should be that big of a deal. But I don't think that was as much of the problem as it was people making Pepsi logos. And like, I don't know if you knew this, but in Black Ops Three, you could make your own camos. Uh. That was really fucking cool. And they removed it because people were putting like Coca Cola and Monster branded shit on their gun. And those companies were like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're not allowed to do this and then stream this in, in game and like Twitch and YouTube. And then these people are making money with our logo on their gun and you didn't pay for that. Like, no. When in reality, they should be like, thank you for the free advertisement. I. In the crew, I can tell you right now, I have like three vehicles that are monster branded. Yeah. Because that's... I just found people that made monster skins and I was like, okay, I want that. And and uh, racing games have always gotten away with that. I think it's just because first of all Well, it those... very much so helps that Monster is a very big supporter of pretty much every type of racing. Yeah, and I'm not saying Monster was the issue. I'm sure that honestly probably Monster is one of the ones that don't give a fuck because they own Monster owns Envy which is a competitive Call of Duty team. So my point is, is Monster probably wasn't the issue. It was probably, you know, other companies like Pepsi or some shit that, well, Pepsi owns Mountain Dew, which is also a, yeah, you get Mountain what I'm Dew trying is. to say. Um, you know, they don't want their shit all over weapons that are used to kill people in an era where mass shootings are popping up all the time. And it's not a good look, uh, at, least, at least to boomers. In a racing game, yeah, it's not that big of a deal. And you don't have as many eyes on you. Not nearly as many as a Call of Duty. So I could see why they don't really give a fuck about that nearly as much. But that's pretty much everything Dude, I wanted to talk about. We just need to kill off all the boomers and then we can have the good world. I'm that's not saying I disagree. 
but for podcasts and publicity reasons, what's wrong with you? The statements made by RT <laughs> do not do not reflect the views of the Game Crew podcast. Blah blah blah, yada yada yada. So, in a similar fashion, um, where are you going with this? It, uh, kind of branching off from the Call of Duty thing, live service games are very much still popular. And we recently saw the release of, like, Marvel's The Avengers, which did not do enough to succeed. Uh, what would a Marvel game need to do to work as a live service title similar to Destiny? What What do they have to do to make that work? Oh, that's a fucking hard question. It is. But could you imagine? They need to be constantly updating. Yes. And they can't do... They can't just throw, like, a big bad out immediately to get beat. You have to go through the list of Marvel villains. Because if you just immediately go, okay, the first villain you're going to face is Galactus. Literally a fucking giant that devours worlds. They can't just throw out, like, a big bad, like Galactus, and be like, okay, this is the first villain you have to defeat. A literal god giant thing Uh that fucking devours worlds they have to be like okay here's taskmaster figure out how the fuck to beat him yeah that's they a have good to do, one they have to t- honestly they have to take all of the villains in the marvel universe the all of like I, when i say all the villains i mean all of them now obviously some of them are much more prominent than others like taskmaster compared to thanos is way different but if they take all of the villains and they put them as like okay this is you have to, to go through this whole plot per se or process to build up to this villain and then that villain is the one that you're going to fight small or big and the task you have to go through to get to that person will vary depending on you know the difficulty or of that character and then just have that character have things that you have to go defend fight steal um whatever in, in varying patterns until you get to that big one and then make them grindable so you can repeat them for whether it's xp or getting gear or loot I think that's how you have to do it. I also have a big map. I think what Spider-Man is yeah. Spider-Man just Brooklyn or is it? Yeah. Yeah. If they're going to do this, they need to have similar to how it Destiny needs to has... be the entirety of like New York, possibly I... fucking LA. Here's my thing. I think it needs to be the entirety of the U S now hear me out. I'm not saying that it needs to be all there all the time because I want the game to be quality, which other games that have maps that big, tend to lack on the quality department. Um, I think that there needs to be locations that you go to over the the entirety of the U S. So like there's a giant map for, you know, parts of Florida, whether it's the Miami area or whatever, and then parts of New York and parts of LA, parts of Chicago. It needs to be St. Louis, Denver. And then each area has its own like set of, uh, of things that you have to deal with. You have its own set of heroes. There are literal yeah, comics yeah. of just the Great Lakes Avengers, Midwest yeah. located Avengers, which sounds boring as fuck. I live yeah. in the Midwest. I can say that this fucking part of the country is boring as shit. You could drive through four states and just see nothing but cornfields. This is true. This is very true. Um, but it has to have a big map, maybe even an evolving map. I would, if they got to the point where. Like let's say let's say it followed the MCU directly. If yeah. it was New York and you had to go through the Battle of New York and the first Avengers, and then through the process after that, you actually watch the shit get picked up. You watch the giant alien floating whale fuckers get picked up. You watch Stark Tower get turned into the Avengers Tower. You watch shit like that. That would be cool. I would love a dynamic environment. Um, heroes have to die and stay fucking dead. Um, Destiny killed off the bit like Destiny killed off Cade Six, and it was emotional and it was impactful. If you're gonna do what they did in the MCU, have Tony Stark eventually die as a hero. I think I would that, love that. So, so here's the deal. I think people are gonna want to play as those characters. Is the problem? There needs to be. There needs to be like non-playable characters that push the story 
and everything. I don't see that's where it gets complicated, man, because I was about to say there needs to be no shortage of superheroes. I'm talking about the most obscure of obscure superheroes and maybe their stats are dog shit, but somebody's going to want to play as that person. Well, there and... won't be a shortage. There's so many like they just released a, a Marvel comic of a new Captain America who is I think he's bisexual. Like there's no sort of they're actively making new heroes as we're speaking because yeah, of course they are. But my point is, or, is you, or you can make, you can make important comic book series as the game. Obviously don't make like the most obscure comic book series in the game. Cause I'm not going to want to play that, but like Deadpool kills the Marvel universe. Yeah. Play as Deadpool and literally kill the fucking Marvel universe. That would be sick. Yeah, it'd be cool if they did, like, a sub thing for that within the game. There there has to be a main story, just like Destiny, but they can't... You can't put the prominent characters, like... You can't have Spider-Man dying when Spider-Man's one of the characters you play as. Like, I don't think that works. But you also need to have important characters like a Spider-Man, like an Iron Man, a Captain America, whatever, so that way deaths matter, because they have to happen. Yeah, but you just yeah. named three of the biggest heroes. Like, who do you kill... That's what I'm saying. That, that no one's going to want to play, but they're impactful. That's the problem. Like, Hawkeye? Oh, but I would like to play as Hawkeye. That would sound awesome. Shooting a fucking bow with explosive arrows at flying aliens. That's yeah. essentially destiny. But doing that, playing as Black Widow, a martial artist, badass who could I, fucking... I don't, I, they almost have to create new characters just for the game. And then they have to drag those were, characters out. If you're going to do that, if you're going to do that, just make the person you play as a new character. Because I don't want to play a Marvel you, game where I can't play as Iron Man or Spider Man or that's lame as fuck. I don't want to do that at all. If that yeah, was what there, they were trying to sell games, to me, I'd be like not interested. There are games that literally you don't do anything but do that. There's an Iron Man VR. There's all of the Spider Man games. That's, There's, I don't count that. Uh, Spider Man, yes. I don't count Iron Man VR. My, but the, my point here is I'm talking about playing a MCU game where you play as the MCU characters. Like, you pick who you want to play as. And I'm not saying you have to pick one and stick with them forever. Like, let's say, like, obviously, you could choose to play as Black Widow once you have that character unlocked. And you could go back through the base missions and play them over again to, to rank up your Black Widow and get better gear, get her, 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 what's the reference in Destiny? Your light or whatever the fuck it's called. Um get your your level up higher and i want to be able to do that and rotate through the marvel characters i want there to be hundreds of them you know whether it's I mean, iron man what, or war machine what they fucking. could do is take all the original avengers so thor hulk iron man hawkeye black widow and give them all interlacing stories to where you can play as just black widow for that story and it weaves its way through all of the other stories, but it's her own story. Yeah. You can play as too. Captain America and it could start in World World War II. And you could that's uh, gonna be a really short one considering it was frozen for 70 years. But Okay, Captain America is a bad example. You can play as Hulk where you're Bruce Banner and then you turn into the Hulk and then you fight the military and then you get recruited by Black Widow in Afghanistan. And then you go through until you're Smart Hulk or whatever. I just realized that I said that we should, they should have a, literally, you should take 10 years of movies and make it into a game. I want it to be a completely different story, but yeah, I get what you're saying, but that still doesn't really, there has to be, I, I think what they have to do is they have to take characters like Nick Fury. They have to take people from the, um, the S.H.I.E.L.D. group. They have to take other prominent figures, whether it's like Mary Jane from Spider-Man or Pepper from Iron Man. They have to take these characters that people that like those aren't people that I necessarily want to play as, but I like I like having them. You're gonna have to kill characters like that. That's who you kill. Because I don't want to play. You can kill Mary Jane, just don't don't kill don't kill don't don't kill Gwen. I'm okay with the, I'm okay Gwen. if they kill Gwen and still have a Spider Gwen because they've already done the whole alternate dimensions thing, you know. So I'm cool with that too. Uh, Miles Morales. Uh, when did they do alternate dimensions? 
No, I'm saying like because that's already confirmed that that's a thing. Yeah, when did they confirm that? What do you mean? Like, what do you mean? What do I mean? When did they confirm? They never confirmed that. that yes, they did. In the last yes, Spider-Man they... movie. That didn't confirm anything. That yeah, did, dude. No, it didn't. Explain I'll how it go, confirmed I'll it. I'll go find the clip for you. Hold on. No, just explain how it confirmed it. There's a scene where I can't because Alex is right here. <laughs> <laughs> I will find you the clip. Um, <laughs> are you talking no, about no, when? Fine. Are you talking about when Mysterio is his name? Mysterio. Yeah. You talking about when Mysterio says he's from an alternate dimension? No. Then what are you on about? There was no alternate yes, dimension. There was, there was yes, they confirmed it from Nick Fury. I mean, from Nick Fury. Uh, Nick Fury wasn't in that movie until the very end. No, he yes, he was, dude. No, he wasn't. It was a yes. scroll pretending to be Nick Fury. Let me just hold on. Just let me explain. Nick Fury was in space that whole time. I just realized that anyone that hasn't seen that movie just had the ending massively spoiled. I'm so sorry. Actually, you know what? No, it's been out for so long. If you haven't seen it, that's your own goddamn fault. It's been out for like two years. It hasn't been out. From has been out for two years. Uh, it came out in like 2019. It did come out in 2019. Oh my god, it has been out for two years. When did it come out in 2019 though? Because if it came like out June. in like... Okay, so a year and a half. Year and, year and nine months. Yeah, year and three quarters. So if you haven't seen that by now, yeah, that's I'm your own goddamn fault. Hold uh, on. Nick Fury explains the snap tore a hole in our dimension, which opened up multiple different dimensions to the multiverse. And I didn't know this, but there's other references and other movies to the multiverse, such as in Doctor Strange, where the Ancient One had mentioned that she's for one she's only one from multiple different um something within the multiverse let me find the exact quote again the universe is only one of an infinite number worlds without the without an end the ancient one tells him who are you in the multiverse mr strange and that was right before she died uh there's another reference to it in ant-man and the wasp uh with the quantum realm Avengers Endgame plans to reverse the Snapshot. Uh, all that shit is all, it lines up with the comic books and exactly what builds to the multiverse. And that also doesn't even begin to talk about how all the information that's come out about the new Spider-Man, which has three different Spider-Man in it. It's not a coincidence. I don't agree with the Nick Fury one because he got fed a load of shit by Quentin Beck, but the other ones I will accept. Um, there's also no proving that he, I don't remember, it's been a while since I've seen that movie, so I could be wrong about this, but there's also no way to necessarily prove that he wasn't from an alternate dimension because he's still who he is. He's still Mysterio. What do you mean? There's no way to prove it. He was Tony Stark's employee. Oh, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Like I said, I haven't seen the movie in a minute, but yeah, um, that's, that's why he created the Mysterios because Stark stole his idea for what was oh. later called Barf. The and Space then... Stone from Endgame is so I'm not gonna say this character because I don't want Alex to hear me, but the Space Stone from Endgame, blah blah blah, is still alive, and now his character will exist in a branch of reality that ex exists in an entirely different universe. Space Stone. Space Stone. I yeah. don't know which one that one is. Um, I don't know how to explain it without giving it away, but is it yellow? I think it's blue. Um, I'm oh, even yeah, more confused. Blue. blue or purple. Maybe it was purple. Anyways, no, well, my the, the point purple is... one was a power stone and that was in Ronin's scepter, but Ronin my... got obliterated when the guardians grabbed it. My point is, uh, there's definitely a multiverse. And uh, that is the direction that they're going in with the next phase of Marvel. And I'm totally down for it. I'm totally down to see Natalie Portman become she Thor. 
What were we talking about before we, we we started discussing all that? Oh, I was gonna say what like, what you would like to see a Marvel game as. I, I'm so I'm totally down with there being like different versions of Spider Man because I don't want like I would like for there to be like a an old an older Spider Man that's grizzled and beat the fuck up. Now maybe that's not like the main Spider Man that's. They need story. to make. They need to make. Nicholas Cage have a cameo in the next Spider-Man and have him just say something from Spider-Verse in his Spider Noir accent. Because um, that was I'm, fucking great. Like there's so I, many Marvel characters, dude, that I I just I don't know. They Marvel's Avengers might not have been the game to do it, but if they redid it, oh, uh, it'd be so I'm still going to buy that game and play it at some point. I can't wait for them to explore more Spider-Man villains than just granted he's only had two movies of his own and they have explored you know Vulture who was played by Michael Keaton and Mysterio who is played by um Jake Gyllenhaal wasn't that Jake I, Gyllenhaal? I want to see yeah I want to see a recreation of uh this is gonna sound really lame and you're not gonna agree with me but I'm ready for a new Green Goblin I just Green lame Goblin, I'd much rather, I'd much rather see a character or villain they haven't used yet like who like carnage yeah yeah I, I that was that was that. teased at the end of um venom yeah played by um, woody harrelson which i feel like that would be a, a really good weird... person i think so that's a weird he's like fucking old as shit now isn't he yeah but he also plays a really good fucking psycho True, look at him he's woody harrelson know. I don't um, know if I like that casting choice. I would love to see an actual fucking Taskmaster. He's yeah. literally someone that can't be beat unless he's beaten by Deadpool, and that would be a great way to tie Deadpool into the Marvel universe. I just I so I play this stupid game on my phone called Marvel. Is it the fucking little Marvel Squadrons or whatever it is? No, no it's Marvel Champions, um, where you can acquire a collection of like Marvel heroes and, and villains too and then you go in and you fight and do these little things to collect crystals and you use the crystals to open basically a loot box to try to get more heroes that you don't have or the same hero but that's a different ranking like a different star level so they're better and you can use them in like higher fights and stuff it's pretty cool i have a really big collection of um of heroes how many champions do i got like i've got Void, which I don't even know who that is, really. Um, Spider Gwen, Yellow Jacket, Thor, Ant Man, Electro, Domino, Iron Fist, Corvus, um, Glaive, The Thing, Magic, Emma Frost, Colossus, Wolverine, Vision, Spider Man, Howard the Duck, Iron Man, Cyclops, Scarlet Witch, Winter Soldier. Like the amount of characters that they could put in there for you to use. And now, granted, like I said, you could probably only do maybe like six of them as like the main story characters, but then have all these other characters as either ones that come in as DLC or ones that you earn throughout the game that you can play through missions like you do with Destiny to like rank them up and you unlock like different outfits and like cool shit for them to use. I don't know. I'd love that. You know what one is that they could do? Huh. Doppelganger. He's a Spider-Man, but he's a literal Spider-Man where he has eight legs and like, let's say someone tried to recreate what happened to Peter, but that was created instead. That would be awesome. That would be cool. Um, they're already coming out with Morbius, which I'm excited for. I feel like that'd be a good one. Um, fucking Kingpin tombstone hammerhead there's so many spider-man villains that they haven't like the ones that always avengers uh age of ultron today i forgot how fucking good that movie was like that was to me that was one of the forgettable avenger movies but once i rewatched it i'm like ultron that that dude was scary man love for them to do um what's what's her black cat yeah, same. For for no other reason than because they need more women villains. That's the only reason. Not because she wears... Yeah, but tight, I, I don't consider her... Dress. She's not really a villain. She's more of a, um anti-hero. I mean, 
she literally steals stuff all the time. She's like Catwoman. Catwoman's not really a villain either. She's not a hero either, and she exactly. she's a villain. She's like an anti-hero. That's literally what the term is called for characters like that. Um, yeah, I feel like anti-heroes have to do something good every once in a while. They do. Name one good thing Felicia fucking Black Cat did. Are you referring to the one occurrence that you saw of her in the game? The multiple occurrences. Or are you talking about the version of her from the comic books who does good and bad shit all the time? I have not just read like, the comic books. Just like Catwoman. Well, that's why I'm trying to tell you that she's an anti-hero, not just a villain. They could also do... Fucking J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah. Can we talk about the fact that that's been the same actor in all of the Spider-Man franchises? That's great. And he's in the game. Yeah, it's it's great. I can never remember his name, but I love him. Uh, yeah, I can't I can't remember his name either. But I'm gonna he's go the same ahead guy. Gonna... Um, oh fuck, isn't it Farmers Mutual or something like that? He's the one insurance yeah, guy. He's in that too. But we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna end the podcast there. This this episode comes in in a little over an hour, I think, about an hour and five, hour and ten minutes. Um, it was eventful, I think, to say the least. I, I think we got a lot of good talking in there. I get excited about games like that when I talk about them because it's like, man, if somebody would just get let me in a boardroom, let me explain. I I think that you'd see something come from from ideas. I feel like, you know, the right people spreading ideas, something could come from it. But we also aren't mentioning that, like, in order to make a game like this, there's a lot of legal shit that has to be agreed upon, which is where it comes becomes difficult, I think. The guy that plays J. Jonah Jameson's name is J.K. Simmons. I can never remember yeah. that, but that's a really easy name to remember. But, um, like, you know, the MCU getting Spider-Man and stuff. Spider-Man probably wouldn't be that hard, but, like, getting them to allow Venom, getting them to allow Carnage from Sony, like, uh, the Fantastic Four. Well, Fantastic Four was just bought back, so that, that one should work, but... Yep, the Fox... Whatever the fuck um you know what now that i think about it it wouldn't be hard at all because the only ones that would be hard would be the the spider-man universe huh oh I mean, that's a big universe but yeah that's pretty much Because initially it. i was like oh man fantastic four is an issue uh nope. all of the x-men stuff's an issue but it's not anymore nope x-men fantastic four be... um deadpool um i don't i should probably actually i don't even know what all these stone so if somebody who listens to this podcast that has any influence and <laughs> likes this idea, I don't care if you have to steal my idea, do it, please. If you can make something <laughs> do happen, do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. Uh, anyways, that's the end of the Game Crew Podcast episode number six.